Hello, everybody, and welcome to this second edition of Analysis Services Monitoring Overview. In session one, we reviewed monitoring tool options and also what makes up the analysis services engines, both tabular and multidimensional, and how the queries are processed by each engine. These were some of the tools that we talked about in session one. Specifically in this session, we'll review how to use an OLAP profiler trace to capture data to evaluate events enabling the ability to monitor server and analysis services database activity. SQL Server Profiler is installed with SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. It tracks engine process events such as the start of a batch or a transaction. It captures data about those events, enabling you to monitor server and database activity. For example, user queries or login activity. You can capture profiler data to a SQL table or a file for later analysis, and you can also replay the events captured on the same or another analysis services instance to see what happened. You can replay events in real time or on a step-by-step -step basis. It's also useful to run the trace events along with the performance counter. The profiler can correlate these two based on time and display them together alongside a single timeline. Trace events will give you more details while performance counters give you an aggregate view. This applies to SQL Server Analysis Services Tabular and Multidimensional, Azure Analysis Services, and Power BI Premium Datasets and Endpoints. You can use SQL Server Profiler to monitor the performance of an instance of the Analysis Services Engine, debug query statements, identify queries that run slowly, test query statements in the development phase of a project by stepping through the statements to confirm the code works as expected, troubleshoot problems by capturing events on a production system and replaying them on a test system. This approach is useful for testing or debugging purposes and lets users continue to use the production system without interference. Audit and review activity that occurred on an instance. A security administrator can review any one of the audit events. This includes the success or failure of a login try and the success or failure of permissions in accessing statements and objects. Display data about the captured events to the screen or capture and save data about each event to a file or SQL table for future analysis or playback. When you replay the data, you can rerun the save events as they originally occurred, either in real time or step by step. From a permissions perspective, for Azure Analysis Services and SQL Server Analysis Services, members of the Analysis Services Server Administrator role can view all server and database traces. Users not in a server administrator role can view traces only for databases in which they are a member of the database administrator role. For Power BI Premium, users can view traces only for databases in which they are a member of the database administrator role. Only those events that require database administrator permissions are available. Trace events requiring server administrator permissions are not available for a Power BI Premium workspace. When using SQL Server Profiler, keep in mind only database events are available for a Power BI Premium workspace. Server events are not available. Trace definitions are stored with the analysis service database by using the create statement. Multiple traces can be running at the same time. Multiple connections can receive events from the same trace. A trace can continue when analysis services stops and restarts. Passwords are not revealed in trace events but are replaced by asterisks in the event. For optimal performance, use SQL Server Profiler to monitor only those events in which you are most interested. Monitoring too many events adds overhead and can cause a trace file or table to grow very large, especially when you monitor over a long period of time. In addition, use filtering to limit the amount of data that is collected and to prevent traces from becoming too large. You can follow the activity of an instance by capturing and then analyzing the trace events gener generated by the instance. Trace events are grouped so that you can more easily find related trace events. Each trace event contains a set of data relevant to the event. Not all pieces of data are relevant to all events. Trace events can be started and captured by using SQL Server Profiler or started from an XMLA command as SQL Server Extended Events. Each trace event will have an event ID, an event name, and an event description. The event ID is simply an integer value that identifies the event type. This value is useful whenever you're reading traces converted to tables or XML files to filter the event type. The name given to the event in the client applications, and then the event description is a brief description of the event itself. With the trace events table demonstrated here, there are over 12 trace event categories with over seven, about approximately 70 event classes in total. There are many of these and you have to kind of look at what you're trying to do or what your tr information you're trying to capture to determine which trace event category and the event class that applies to your situation. 
In the upcoming demo, we're going to take a look at using Analysis Services Tabular and Azure Analysis Services Profiler Traces. We'll configure traces for SSAS Tabular, which is an on-prem, and we also will do an Azure Analysis Services Trace. We'll save these trace events to a SQL Server table. We're using Excel to query SSAS Tabular on-prem instance to generate the trace events. We also use Power BI to query the Azure Analysis Services instance. We observe the trace events, show those trace events, and we also use Power BI to evaluate the trace data that we collected. For the first part of the demo here, we're going to set up the OLAP trace on our SQL Server 2016 tabular instance, which is here. It's simply by clicking the Tools menu and SQL Server Profiler. On our Connect to Server dialog, we've got our server type, Analysis Services, the server name and instance of Analysis Services tabular we're connecting to. We are using Windows Authentication in this case. And we simply click Connect. Now we start to configure the trace properties. In this case, for our Azure Everyday, you can name it something like so. I can also save the file. As I mentioned, I'm going to save mine to a table. And my table is on also an instance of SQL Server 2016. I'm going to say Connect. And then it gives you a dialog, and I have a table already created. It is in my test DW. It is in right here, my SSAS tabular trace is where I want to go is the table. Now, one key thing to note is that each time you do a trace and you use the same table, it will drop and recreate the table. If you want to maintain history or traces, and this is what I've done in my case, is I create a history table and insert that history into that history table to maintain that kind of view over time. That's what I've done. I'm not going to go with that step, but I'm going to show you once I click OK here, it's going to say, hey, you're going to write overwrite the existing table. I'm going to say yes, and I'm, now I'm going to go through event selection. I'm not going to go through the entire thing here, but just for the purposes of this demo, I do end up selecting all events so that um, I can capture all the data. The, again, this is not the recommended approach, and it's always wise to know what events you wanting to target and, and do those on each trace. Once I have my event selections configured, I can then now say run and this will start the trace running. Just to show that it's happening now, this is the trace window. It's logging events and now I'm going to use Excel and try to kind of demonstrate this kind of simultaneously here. Excel is connected to my analysis services tabular. As I add stuff to this, we're going to start seeing events being written to the profiler trace. This is also, once we end the trace, it will log those results to the table that we de designated. And I can do, for instance, a lot of different things. If I want to say English occupation in the rows, this is going to, again, continue to log the queries and anything that I want to do here. I can actually uh, say, you know, give me the calendar year, so on and so forth. And this is issuing those queries, MDX, DAX conversions, all that kind of stuff on the tabular side of things. Once I'm satisfied with the profiler trace, I can just say stop the trace right here, right here, and that will stop effectively stop the trace from occurring at this point. The steps to set up for the profiler trace for Azure Analysis Services is the same steps that we did for our tabular on-prem, with the exception of how we identify the server name. And I'm going to do two tools, SQL Server Profiler. Profiler window is going to come up. We actually want to do an Analysis Services trace. I, in this case, I'm going to do this on my Azure Analysis Services instance. I will say Connect. I now have my trace properties already pre-configured here step through that. And I've also did the event selection. In this case, I did all of them. Again, not recommended, but just for demonstration purposes here. I'm going to go ahead and click Run, and this will fire off our trace. And here, I'm using Power BI connected to my Azure Analysis Services just to give you a different viewpoint and use different tooling. So as I do these slices and things like that, these are issuing queries against my Azure Analysis Services, you know, filtering all these types of things. In this case, we're doing by product category name. I've got several charts here that are changing. I can actually filter using Canada or UK, United Kingdom or multi-select those and these again these are issuing queries back to our Azure Analysis Services and then also as a result issuing our trace. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the trace and here I've created a simple Power BI desktop report against the data that I've captured for my trace events for both the Analysis Services tabular instance on prem and my Azure Analysis Services. Over time here I've captured over 7100 events. I've seeing total error events, I can start 
figuring out what I need to do to potentially evaluate more on what ev total error events were captured. I've got an average runtime overall of 52, almost 53 milliseconds. That's pretty good. And I can again evaluate, you know, on June I've had a pretty good uh, turn on this. And I can see across, you know, multiple dates here that, you know, 512 obviously had some type of spike in either activity. This just demonstrates how you can actually evaluate the data using various tools that are available to the marketplace now. Thank you for attending this Azure Everyday session. I hope you found it useful and informational. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Thank you for attending and have a great day. Thank you.